we are live. Welcome to the Defenders Season Thoughts. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this season. And yeah, so, the after this one I will be doing the rest of the Marvel Netflix shows in the order that they premiered on Netflix and you know I, I watch one episode per day so on average two weeks between videos so next is Punisher season one, Jessica Jones season two, Luke Cage season two, Iron Fist season two, Daredevil season three, Punisher season two and finally Jessica Jones season three so let's dive into the reluctant team up by reluctant heroes that uh, Hold on, um, I'm just gonna do, there we go. So, the very first episode, the H word. Very cool fight to open the pilot and the show. I think it got close to my personal border of like okay I get you're trying to be chaotic and like difficult to follow and such but now I'm just starting to get a headache it came close it did not cross it and yeah the the dying man tells Danny to go to New York so I don't know I guess he read ahead in the script you know it is necessary like the the end of you know season one of Iron Fist you know, he discovers Kunlun is is gone. So, yeah, makes it, you know, they kind of have to explain in this show why why is he just in New York now? You know, what exactly? Yeah. I really love that the intro sequence uses the color schemes of all four Defenders, and j the show itself also uses their color schemes. And Jessica's getting sent home from a bar and gets back Trish's car and you know and and yeah Trish wants to call her a hero but Jessica says don't say the H word and you know she's when she's getting sent home from the bar no like it's it's light outside you you gotta go you know that yeah and Luke is released from prison I feel like the episode does a good job of quickly introducing the individual members without rushing and you know I've, I've seen some people say you know oh you know of course we expect them to get you know for for the four defenders to to team up very soon and that would you know yeah it's it it's better that they earn it instead of just immediately giving and and you know I'm probably going to be drawing some like, some comparisons to the first Avengers movie here since you know this is kind of the Netflix version of of that you know each of the heroes had you know at least one you know in that case movie in this case series and in the case of the one that everybody liked he got two so yeah I think you know both that movie and this show do a good job of explaining why they get involved what is their personal stake in this you know and and just yeah you know why aren't they off doing something else I mean even yeah Bruce Banner I I forget Mal Malaysia I wanna say he's definitely he's he's not in the West anymore and you know, Iron Fist, I, I honestly don't remember. I think they said where they were at the start of this episode, but I, I forgot. But yeah, you know, and both of them are asked to go to New York. So yeah. And I really like that, you know, the Luke's lawyer is foggy. And he's now all the time got the, the slick back hair and he's wearing a, a nice suit and just... It is a while to me, considering how, like, he was just barely put together for a lot of Daredevil, you know, maybe especially season one, but I think also season two, you know, but, but yeah, the, let's see, I'm, I'm not sure it's said, but I mean, I could 
definitely a man. Like, you know, at the end of Luke Cage season one, Claire implied she was going to contact Matt. Right, and Matt sent it on to. Yeah, yeah, because it's not like Foggy is going to refuse to. Like, if Matt calls, Foggy's going to take the call and it's going to be, okay, you know, we aren't where we were, but it's not like, you know, they're they're not like. Yeah, I guess I thought of it because it's behind me. You know, the the they're not where where Peter and Harry are at the start of Spider Man Three. You know, they're not. So yeah. And alternately, maybe if Jessica, because Claire knows Jessica, maybe Claire. Instead of contacting Matt, contacted Jessica and said, our mutual friend is in prison. And Jessica, like, went up to Hogarth and said, you'll owe me, I'll, I'll owe you a favor, you know. And, and we know Jerry can't turn that kind of thing down from someone like Jessica. So, yeah, you know, that, that yeah, I, I feel like the, the show... Again, it's possible it was said, and I just forgot. But certainly, the the it is it makes sense that he got you know, and no surprise that Foggy got him out. It was very like I'm not gonna get into all the details, but yeah, by the end of season one of of Luke Cage, it was like I mean, yeah, okay, I get why they're arresting him, but yeah, a lawyer is gonna be able to get him out without and yeah. And we see Matt in court, and he wins the case and tells the kid it's going to be difficult, but to not give up fighting. And Danny has a PTSD nightmare, feels guilt over the Kunlun monks. I, uh, I didn't say it in my Iron Fist Season 1 video. I realize that the monks... I'm not sure the monks... Wait. No, I guess, were they monks of Kunlun? Yeah, anyway, I realize that the, the, oh wait, no, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not using the, the right name for the, for the monks. I realize that I'm just, you know, just to get through these quicker so that I don't say the entire, so I just say the Kundal monks. I have never been unhappy about seeing Sigourney Weaver in anything, and I do agree with those who said that it wasn't really necessary. Was that necessary? Was basically my reaction when she died. I feel like she could easily have been like in the rest of you know, and and the uh, the what the flick people point out. I mean, the only person, the only character in the show that would where it would be like uh, um, satisfying for them to kill Alexandra would be for Electra. And, you know, Electra kills her and takes over, and the hand, you know, so now Electra's in charge of the hand, not Alexandra, and the hand just does what Alexandra wanted it to anyway, so there's not really anything there, and I do feel like they could have made that really, really compelling. I think Alexandra should have died maybe in the finale, like, and, and either, yeah, yeah, like, she is going to fight against... Or maybe she gives, maybe she's going to fight the defenders, or maybe the, maybe she gives, uh, I'm going to keep calling her Ellie, because I think it's kind of funny that Stick called this, you know, assassin, e even up until his death, he kept calling her Ellie. And wasn't she the one, yeah, she was the one who killed him. And, you know, right up to the end, he kept calling her Ellie, and that just makes me chuckle. So, I'm going to keep calling her Ellie, at least some of the time. Yeah, then, then Ellie kills Alexandra, and the other fingers, like, they're, they're stunned, and they look at Ellie, and she says, she, you know, she's going to give them an order that's completely absurd, or something. Nobody leaves here until Daredevil is dead, something like that, you know, so, some kind of where the, you know, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I thought she was great, and I, I mean... She really sold this idea of, you know, they've been around for, I forget, I think they did say, but it is like, was it thousands of, I think they said it was thousands of years, you know, and 
yeah, I, honestly, I felt all of them sold it. Um, I guess m an argument could be made that Madame Gao sold it better, but she's also been selling it for so long, you know. She told Fisk, I speak all the language. You know, he, he asks, how many languages do you speak? How many languages do you speak? And she replied, all of them. You know, that, I mean, if you have... That's that's one of the things that you might do if you live for thousands of years. You know, learn all the languages. But I, yeah, I saw someone, uh, I believe it was the IMDb Goof section, where someone said, you know, if they're this global organization, how come killing just this, you know, this one group of, of them in New York is going to defeat the the hand all over the world and none of the heroes stop and question this but I, I realize it's probably different in the comics I have to admit I don't know that much about the hand the the fact that they had fingers came as a surprise to me so yeah that's it's, you know as far as I can tell and maybe you know maybe I'll be disproven by maybe it'll be retconned or something in, in later series you know, like I said, I have. Uh, I guess I haven't said that yet in this video. I have not watched the. You know, I'm watching them in order. I have not watched the rest of them as I record this video. So, but but as far as I can tell, in Marvel Netflix, there are only those five fingers. They are the ones who control the hand. Like I'm. I mean, essentially, I guess there's maybe a power vacuum now. But like, who's gonna be able to run these ninjas? the way that these thousand year old you know I, I I don't know I don't I don't think they're gonna get back to this massive power that they had honestly I wouldn't rule out that they might cannibalize you know the, there's gonna be like I don't know f four or five different people all trying to run the hand and attacking the other ones and they're gonna end up with most of the hand being dead now yeah, you know, I mean, they left Kunlun, was it, thousands of years ago. Madame Gao still dreams of the the tree from the, from the garden all this time, you know, later. They are the only ones who have that, who have so much power that they, you know, that's also, also a thing. Like, how do you, how do you get a ninja to do what you say? You basically have to be able to take out that ninja, you know, if they're they're running these, I mean, we don't know, but I'm guessing they must at least have thousands of, of hand if they're operating all over the world, you know, so they must have thousands of hand ninjas, like, what's to stop the hand ninjas from being like, I mean, I didn't like the, did you like the, order? Did, no, nobody likes the last orders we've been given, I mean, why don't we just stop them, and, you know, this show, you know, demonstrates just how powerful they are. And, yeah, so back to, you know, yeah, so Jessica Jones continues to push away the idea of being a hero. She's not going to look for John, and then immediately someone calls, warns her not to with the distorted voice she picks up. They immediately hang up. I really, you know, it's it's kind of convenient. It's It's a bit, like, do they not realize that Jessica, you know, she's really, I don't know, I mean, I guess... Yeah, because she, like, she hasn't been answering. People have been calling. You know, the end of season one of her show, you know, Malcolm answers the phone. And... Actually, yeah, come to think of it, does that mean that she has been a hero for a little bit and then stopped again? Anyway, yeah. I really love that her answering machine, you know, the the... Yeah, if you you know if you call her and the answering machine is what you get, she just says wrong number. You know, not not the name and not you know call me and I'll call you back or leave a message I'll call you back. Just wrong number. Whoever it is, she doesn't want to talk to him. And yeah, you know the the show captures the tone of each of the defenders. And once they're all in the same place, it finds something that works for all of them. And Luke and Claire have coffee, and 
she wrote him, which is very sweet, and she plagiarized, and she's like, well, not everybody, not everybody is as corny as you. And Karen and Matt talk about her knowing that he's Daredevil, and he stopped after season two of his own solo show, which I think is just reiterating. I've, it's been a while now, but I, I think he did basically quit at the end of that. I really love Malcolm coming in, Jessica being frustrated with him. And Jessica claims her grandfather is trying to contact her. He's seen us. You know, so of course she gets the number. What kind of monster wouldn't give the, the number for the. Yeah. And that's just. Yeah. I, I will never tire of Jessica Jones putting on a voice and, and imitating, you know, the, the in her own. In her solos, she she imitated like um, a sorority girl, kind of just yeah. Does this mean you're taking the case? I want my key back, and get out of my apartment. And Knight tells Luke to be the new pops. Weaver tells Gao to speed up since she herself is dying, and Gao is clearly scared of her. And that is one of the classic ways in comic books to establish that someone is a big deal. Have someone that we already knew was a big deal be scared of them or defeated by them or something like that. And Luke talks to Kansas' brother. He says, hero is your word. Match cut to Jessica, who also not sure if she wants to be hero. Absolutely love it. And Jessica finds explosives. There's the earthquake. Right, so, yeah, and, and Weaver talking to Elektra. The ending is a great hook. Like, I immediately wanted to, to watch the, the next episode, see what happens next. Now, let's see the, the, yeah, so one critic did say too much of the pilot is just catching up. There's very little plot that's necessary. It's the worst episode of the whole run of eight, too little action. And... Yeah, I mean, I can I can understand. I think the pilot is essentially proof of concept. It's telling fans of the four shows, we understand you, we will respect the continuity, and it is also possible to start by watching the pilot of this show, since it gives you an introduction to each of the main characters, and all of this is similar to Halloween, Halloween 2018. Although, to be fair, the the, you know, Ah, uh, hold on. I will get an uh, Yeah. One of my longtime subscribers and frequent commenters, Arts Cafe, said that if, you know, if you don't watch the Iron Fist the season one the solo series, then you will be very confused about by him in Defenders. And that's for sure. Um, and that's, you know, I mean. I don't know. I'm not sure I would say, you know, to someone, just watch Iron Fist and then Defenders. Because if they just watch Iron Fist, they might not be that interested in Defenders. But hypothetically, you, you could. And that brings us to the second episode. Mean Right Hook. Love the opening. I could immediately tell that we were seeing things from Daredevil's perspective. And he overhears a looting gone wrong, and the guy's going to shoot them, so he stops it. Trish tries calming people down, getting facts out to people, but the phone is cut off. Upstairs, don't want more earthquake coverage. And, yeah, I mean, ultimately it's because of the hand, but I couldn't help wonder if that was maybe commenting on coverage of terrorism and wars in the Middle East, which, you know, yeah, a lot of it has been very friendly to the U.S. government. And Knight is investigating the place. Jess was, and Jess, you know, still so she can continue her research. I'm really glad that Danny's hair and facial hair is toned down from the first season of his solo series. Even after he got a, you know, a haircut, all of them cut, some, something like that, it was still a bit much, and I feel like they got it right here. 
and Colleen and Danny decide to go searching based on the unique sword, one of only ten in the whole world. I really appreciate it, that it's her and not him who knows. Way too much of a solo show was him knowing everything and being able to do everything. And we see Matt still struggling over whether or not to be Daredevil. And Luke gets involved because he has to find out who is hiring kids from Harlem. And Luke and Claire share some physical affection. Very sweet. And Sigourney Weaver knows stuff about Brahms and Beethoven and, and knows more about Kunlun than Gao. And I, you know, at the time I got the sense she knew them personally, didn't she? She knew Brahms and Beethoven when they were, and yeah, you know, heavily implied. And Jessica does some researching, needs more. Jerry warns her about FBI Homeland Security. I, th I feel like they did a good job, the, the various supporting cast from the, the solo series was, you know, they, they, not all of them show up, but, you know, some of the really important ones, mo most of the really important ones show up, the ones where it makes sense, you know, it makes sense for Jerry Hogarth to show up, I'm not sure that, I uh, can't believe I'm, um, I'm Mariah. You know, I'm not sure what she would have done, or Stryker, or, you know, various, but, yeah. And Foggy brags about having lots of sex with Marcy, and gives a massive caseload to Matt to distract him from going out and being Daredevil. It's sounding a bit like AA. And Colleen and Danny find corpses at the knife it's a sword place and Luke finds the guy Turk told him about calls night but says he can't give the address until he takes care of someone first Let's see. yeah and Jerry tells Foggy he has to keep an eye out for Jess getting in trouble that could impact the company you know he's it's not that she's worried about Jess or at least she wouldn't admit that and yeah, you know, Jess comes home and, you know, Malcolm is being held hostage by John, who suicides, scared of the hand, which, that's another good way to, to really, you know, now we know that whatever the, the hand are planning, it's so, you know, it made this guy stockpile explosives and now he suicides rather than facing them. And yeah, and and Knight arrests Jessica, Colleen, and Danny fight the cleanup crew, and Luke is there to make sure Cole doesn't get in trouble. So obviously he runs afoul of Danny. I quite like their fight, and it was very cool to see that the Iron Fist does, in fact, hurt Luke Cage. And that is, you know, it's basically, you kind of, once once they're in the same place, they kind of have to fight. At least when it's stuff like, you know, because that is the thing, like, you know, if if it didn't happen on the show, you know people would have been debating, you know, regardless of what it's like in the comics. can the Iron Fist hurt Luke Cage, you know, and yeah. And Alexandra and Stick know each other. I quite like the conversation between Jessica and Knight. And Matt shows up to represent Jessica and yeah, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've I'm not sure if we see... I, th I think it is said, yeah, that, you know, Hogarth does not want her own company directly involved with Jessica, considering that, you know, she... Let's see, she stole evidence, and she left... She left an active crime scene before she had been completely questioned, you know, obstruction of justice, I think they call it. And, yeah, Jerry doesn't want her company directly embroiled with that so she get you know yeah foggy 
tells Matt to go and and get her out of trouble because if you know if she gets like full on arrested gets like a prison sentence you know yeah people uh, obviously it's going to come out that she worked for Jerry sometimes so yeah so yeah by the end of this episode if we're going off 6 degrees rule then all four heroes have met and episode 3 worst behavior so we go back to months ago and Alexandra calls Istanbul Constantinople which tells us she's been along around that line you know the the what the flick people one of them pointed out that waiter is not gonna tell this rich client you know oh no no you're you're mistaken about that you know it's in case someone in the audience doesn't realize you know it is now Istanbul not Constantinople and yeah so she's told they have the black sky really horrifying when Electra comes back I was way more like affected by that than with Harold and we see Alexandra can kick ass too language will come back to I'll teach you what a fork is and Electra with swords versus guy with bow staff and then the whole group and then the whole group with swords and the lights out and she wins badass and you know I could imagine some people I'm, I'm not sure I encountered anyone saying this but I could imagine some people might be like oh come on we wanted to see all the swords versus you know don't turn off the light for that but we did just get some action and ultimately they do have a budget you know it's not like like the movies have a massive budget but Netflix is on a much smaller budget than that so yeah and yeah that was that was really really cool and a great way to really demonstrate you know the the yeah I, I did see one person say that um, over the course of this season basically Electra just goes through what was it a uh, what did they say a watered-down version of her arc in Daredevil season 2 I wish I could really argue with that it uh, it doesn't bother me as much as I think it bothered that critic but it's yeah I can't really argue with it it's yeah if you have an argument please put it in the comments but I can't myself think of one and we see stick got loose by cutting off his own hand and Jess and Matt in the interrogation room she's not letting him in yet I really love you know it was like he's like are you always this rude to people trying to help you or you know something along those lines and just yeah is <laughs> and and this thing of like you know she knows what to say to cops but night pushes harder you know she we saw in her own first season you know she yeah she she tells cops i you i know the law i know you can't hold me on anything you know but night is like look i know that technically I can't, you know, you're not gonna like go away from murder or something, but if you don't work with me, I can make this very difficult for you. And that is kind of, you know, that like, I'm sure some people, when they watched Luke Cage, you know, they were like, oh wow, Knight is badass. She is not gonna let go. Wow, I w I want to see her interrogate Jessica. And Claire realizes Luke was dealing with Danny, so she sets up a meeting between the two and Jessica following Matt, and he parkours out. And let's I really like that Luke points out Danny's privilege and decides he's going to try, you know, so, and Danny ends up, you know, going to the top instead of fighting up from the bottom. And it also gets us very nicely, you know, I'm, yeah, um, I think they do a really good job. I'm gl uh, pacing this. I'm glad that there's only eight episodes. I didn't really feel like any episode was just wasted. Again, if you disagree, please put in the comments. I'm happy to debate. The, the yeah, um, I felt like the story was a lot more focused. 
than in the in the solo series. Uh, the you know, yeah, no no filler episodes, nothing that just felt like yeah, you know, and and it does make sense. Like Danny can just walk in, you know, he doesn't have you know, yeah, and. Jessica acts dumb to get info from the architect and finds out where the building is. Luke finds a massive wad of cash that Cole hid from his mother with the address for the hand headquarters and Cole's mother's told her son is dead. And you know that really, it, it, it's such a great cuz like yeah. Luke Cage season 1 you, you know yeah 100% like by by the end of it He's definitely, he really wants to, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's upset that Candace died, that, you know, that she was murdered, and he, you know, yeah, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure we weren't told in Luke Cage season one that she had siblings, but it makes sense, you know, and at the start of this, the, one of Candace's brothers is dead, and then we, you know, we don't see, but we, we already know Cole when we're told he died he was murdered in prison so yeah Luke wants to make sure that's not gonna happen to anyone else and Stick asks Colleen where the Iron Fist is Danny goes to Midland on business and Jessica shows up with Matt following her I really Jessica has so many such funny snarky lines in in this season and Danny versus the boardroom people is a much better fight than anything in, you know, Iron Fist Season 1. So, yeah, this really tells me it was not about Finn Jones. It was the fact that the choreography was taught to him 10 minutes before filming. You know, this was... The, the showrunner for this show was one of the two showrunners on the... Uh, Hold on, just to make absolutely sure I'm not talking out my ass here. Yes, one of the two showrunners from Daredevil Season 2, Marco Ramirez, was also showrunner on this. And, yeah, you know, this has the stunt team from that. And, yeah, really, really glad. I love seeing the four together. It is kind of contrived that all of them find out the info from different sources right in time to all meet up without planning to do so. I wish that they had gone off the same piece of time-sensitive info and getting their, you know, getting the information in different ways, but just, it doesn't really make, you know, and, and Iron F Danny even has the line, how much more obvious does it have to, and it's like, uh, please don't. Don't point out that it's that obvious. Really love the team hallway fight, you know, this yeah, Marvel, Netflix, and hallway fights. Amazing. All the time. And awesome fight between Daredevil and Elektra. And let's see. Yeah, and they assemble the elevator. And that brings us to episode four, Royal Dragon. I really appreciate Luke and Jessica expressing concern for each other. That makes sense for both characters. And, yeah, several of them just want to be on their own, you know, doing things their way. They don't really want to work together at first. So, yeah, basically, yeah, Luke and Jessica focus on each other. Daredevil and Iron Fist go, you know, check that all the, the entrances and exits are secured. And Daredevil and Luke almost comes to blows. And just knows Matt must be Daredevil, convinces him to reveal it to the rest. I really like the, uh, let's see, um, yeah, that was the episode before this one where, you know, he's like, I have to hide my identity. So he grabs her scarf and puts it, you know, you look like an asshole. It's your scarf. <laughs> And yeah, and Stick reached the team because Danny told Colleen where he was. And yeah, the the you know throughout the 
you know, all, you know, his enemies are always telling Danny, you're the worst Iron Fist I've ever met. And his friends and allies are always telling him, you know, how stupid he is also, so, yeah. And Elektra looks at the size and beats up White Hat's two henchmen, being criticized for the fact that she didn't kill Matt. In her defense, he has plot armor. If no one has, then someone should make like a you know have just yeah it's it's ripe for a memeing. Just have you know White Hat say, "How come you didn't kill Daredevil?" and then like you know Electra could say he survives an explo you know a building exploding and crumbling on top of where he is, no elevator, buried deep underground at the end of this season. And you're asking me if I can kill him, you know. And Stick respects Iron Fist, but still thinks that Danny is a dumbass. I do wish they had Stick mention Kunlun and or the Iron Fist in Daredevil Season 2. I'm almost certain they didn't, but here they do have Stick say that the Chased were there to support the Iron Fist. So, if I understand correctly, basically, once the Iron Fist... Yes, at at some point, you know, he he thought that the Iron Fist would stay in Kunlun, defending Kunlun, you know, for for a very long time. But you know, the Chased were basically there for if or when the the Iron Fist left Kunlun, because the only reason he would do that is to stop the Hand that were. Uh, because that would the yeah that was his that was his raison d'etre, and then the chase would be there as an army to support him, because he's not great on his own, and yeah you know so and and he's like oh so I have an army oh no they're all dead. And I really, you know, I know I'm I'm such a mark for this kind of thing. But when they say, you know, they've done it before, Pompeii, Chernobyl, and you know now New York is next. It just, I absolutely love it. I I it's just it's so it makes no sense. Chernobyl, Chernobyl. They've they they were behind Chernobyl, you know. Despite like I mean, as far as I understand, it's pretty well documented the. Like, it's it's not some big mystery, you know, it's not like, there, there was that, uh, I forget what it was, but there was some, there is at least one great historical mystery where we don't quite know, you know, but, and Pompeii, Pompeii, that was like, what what are they called again? Not, it, was, it was a natural disaster, I forget which kind, but just, yeah, having a character say it with, with you know, and, and it's a character that we've, come to trust like if the character if it was the first thing the character said and we didn't know them at all but you know it wouldn't work but no he yeah I've, I've I'm pretty sure it's stick saying it you know and yeah just like I if you actually really stop and think about it, it doesn't really make sense that they would be that they would be behind those and be able to to hide their involvement in it entirely but yeah, it just, like, now we know that it is, you know, they really are dealing with dangerous forces. Like, you know, before this, like, the the hand, like, there was some mystical stuff, and there they sure have a lot of ninjas, but they didn't really... I, f I feel like this show gave gave them teeth, more more so, at least. He's dead. At least, last I saw him. <laughs> and, yeah, so we find out, you know, Gao, Bakudo, Sawande, Alexandra, Mur and Murakami are the five fingers of the hand. Are you drunk? No. I mean, it doesn't matter. I thought you already put us under surveillance. The car. It's been there since last night. He said he was a cop. Did he show you a badge? 
No. D Danny, if you don't want Matt to think of you as the kid, maybe sit on the chair like a grown-up. But I will say, it's, it's in character for him. And Jessica threatens and interrogates the hand outside John's window. And... Alexandra tries to convince Danny when she fails she has electric attack. And Jessica shoves a car through the front of the restaurant. And you know, at first we think, you know, oh, someone is driving that. No, no, no. She, you know, she walks up behind it afterwards. And it does make sense that Jess would leave first. She does not put up with the stick shtick. And that brings us to episode five take shelter and so one day's in a car in yeah in a car takes off his hat proves he's part of tenet very cool fight Electra and Murakami versus the defenders now it's a goddamn party and the defenders stand back to back and Electra being a weapon for the hand is right out of the comics and her fighting against Matt is legitimately tragic and she pauses at him, calling her by her name. And so Wanda actually hurts Luke, which, you know, yeah, I mean, so the Iron Fist and some other, uh, yeah, the, the various teachings from Kunlun can hurt Luke. And Jess blocks the door with a dumpster, and Stick has them go into the sewer, hoping for backup from Ninja Turtles, of course. And Gao's able to push the dumpster and open the door. I'm fine. Truck could use some work. Luke cut a finger off the hand. And Jess doesn't want to wait for someone to wake up, so she hits him. And she's, you know, she wants to keep hitting him until he talks. That was really funny. Like, they're like... How, how much longer do you think it's going to be before he wakes up? And she's like, he's going to be awake in just a few seconds. Why? Because this is about to happen to him. And when he brings up Kilgrave, Luke has to stop her from hitting him. And then afterwards, she does hit him, knocking him out. And yeah, he said that Claire and Trish are in danger. And... Bakudo is back alive, asks Colleen to join him, and cuts her. And, yeah, I honestly wasn't entirely sure if Colleen would survive this show, since, you know, yeah, it's... And, and ultimately, yeah, I guess, ultimately, Stick is the only major character... Well, yeah, and, and all five fingers of the hand die here. Oh, I mean, I suppose it's possible. Let's see, did Gao get away from... Before the building broke? I, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Now... Right, I did see one person point out, you know, they don't have Jessica do the really high jumps very much, so... I guess they're less obsessed with that than Kilgrave was. And that is something I do think it would have been cool if they worked that in a couple more times. And Jessica gets Trish, is attacked by Murakami, struggles to defeat him until Daredevil shows up, assists. And instead of her saying thank you or something, she just says he looked better with the scarf and Nice ears. I really love her character. I hadn't really thought about it, but I guess part of the reason they wrote Luke into prison at the end of his first season was so he couldn't show up and assist Iron Fist, since Claire knows both of them. And that wasn't something they wanted, although it would have been... I feel like if they had... If Iron Fist Season 1 had started with him going after the hand from right away, like... He walks in the door of the the company, and the the two friends, you know, the uh, the Meacham siblings, both accept that he's really Danny and reinstate him and everything. 
you know, yeah, you could have the episodes with him fighting against the hand that you currently do, and then you could have had a couple of episodes with him and Luke, you know, yeah, the, the, you know, maybe being heroes for hire, maybe some, yeah. And, and I did also see, you know, someone pointed out, since the show isn't bigger in, like, overall stakes and scale than the other Marvel Netflix, then, you know, they could just have had them guest more on each other's shows, since they did already do that some. It, per personally, I, I really, really like this show, this season. And let's see. Danny and Luke both react to Daredevil using the wire on Sawande, and Danny's really impressed. Luke is trying to play it cool. I appreciate the detail that Jess doesn't want Daredevil to kill Sawande. She also didn't like it in her own solo series, the fifth episode of season one, when Simpson tortured a guy. And that was actually something I was wondering if if that was going to come up when the two met because that is you know that is a major difference between the two of them. D Daredevil does go further than Jess is comfortable with. And the uh, Murakami and the other fingers argue with Alexandra. We learned they have no more extra life juice. The last of it was spent on Black Sky. And Matt tells the rest of the Defenders the truth about Elektra, and it does cause some conflict, understandably. And so Wande takes Danny as a human shield, hoping to leave with him. Stick decapitates him. So that's one finger down, four left. And let's see. That brings us to episode six, Ashes, Ashes. The record stops working, Alexandra examines it, and, you know, I'm guessing it's some kind of thing of, like, you know, everything eventually breaks, you know, it, it reminds her of the fact that she'll die soon, if not for the, if they don't get more. Yeah. Rejuvenation. Water. And... Yeah, the other defenders want Danny to be out of reach of the hand. And since they haven't already, Danny and Daredevil fight. It's, it's a really good fight, and the others just get involved. So, almost each member has fought each of the others by now. And finally, Jess knocks out Danny. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy with the amount of action in the show, but this is another Marvel Netflix show where even just scenes of them talking are deeply compelling. You know, I'd, I'd say Iron Fist Season 1 is the only one that isn't at least always true of so far. And Stick set Sawande's head so the fingers know he's dead. Discuss, point out, it wouldn't be the first time they turned against one another. And that is, I mean, that is a serious issue. If your fingers don't cooperate, how are you supposed to play rock, rocks, papers, rocks, scissors, paper, I, crap, I forget what order, but yeah. And yeah, when uh, Jess talks to Lexi about Matt, you know, she's talking about Matt's past without you know, saying, so, my friend here, you know, 
yeah, you know, I, I really appreciate the, the bonding they do. You know, it, it's as close as Jess gets to saying, hey, you had it rough, and, you know, I, I understand your, your pain. You know, she, she refers to him in the third person in front of someone else. That's, yeah. And Matt fakes not being able to find the piano and plays. At first, Jess can't tell why, but he finds a note that doesn't play right. Jess opens it, finds the building plans. And, yeah, you know, she's now certain he was going to blow it up, but also finds something about the bottom of the hole. There's something under Midland Circle. And, yeah, I really appreciate, you know, we actually found out what was going on uh, with that since we didn't find out in all of Daredevil Season 2. Now. You know, ultimately it didn't go anywhere, but I did like, you know, we see that Danny readies the, the Iron Fist as he's sitting, you know, tied up. And Stick knocks out Luke with gas and about to kill Danny. And that's, it's very clever, you know, that Stick is not stupid enough to think that if the two engage in a fight, he can actually knock out Luke. Or certainly it wouldn't be very tactical. It's much more tactical to, you know, Luke thinks that he's doing some kind of um, ritual you know, some, some, like, meditation, maybe. Which, you know, Stick knew that he wouldn't know wasn't that. Right, and, and the fact that the entrance to Kunlun was what was at the bottom of, of the whole you know, that is legitimately, a, you know, yeah, you understand why they put in the effort to, you know, this, this, you know, dig this massive hole under, under New York, you know, some, I'm not 100% sure, and it might have been said, but there's a lot of exposition on this show, exactly who it was that moved Kunlun there, no, it could yeah, I was about to say Iron Fist, but no, because, the other Iron Fist, because there was only ever one Iron Fist at the same time, and Danny only left Kunlun recently. So, no, but yeah, whoever it was, the, um, yeah, the hand, maybe the hand moved it, or maybe it got moved when Danny wasn't there to protect it, and the, but, but yeah, the, the only way to open it is with the Iron Fist. So, yeah. And we see, you know, Jessica and Matt run into to help after Stick knocks out Luke with gas. And, you know, we see Matt do some parkour. And the first bit of it he does without the camera cutting. So that was really, really cool. And, yeah, so Stick... Let's see. Right, yeah. Electra comes in, fights Stick, Matt, Jessica, Luke, and she kills Stick and leaves with Danny. And yeah, Alexandra and Murakami, and Murakami was about to try to kill her. She's confident that he would lose. And then Electra shows up with Danny. And Electra stabs. Alexandra in back with Psy and cuts her head off and takes power. So yeah, the last two episodes, all the way through, it's Electra in charge instead of Alexandra. And yeah, it doesn't really change anything. Episode 7, Fish in the Jailhouse. And the camera reminds us of Ellie having knocked out the three defenders that, you know, the, the, the defenders that she didn't bring to the fingers and killed Stick. 
just is cuffed to a table. I appreciate how reali realistically the show is approaching this. It's what would happen in that situation. You know, the cops, they can't really go off, you know, they can't believe these things they're being told. For some reason, this was when I thought of noting the following. So, yeah, I'm really glad that characters like Knight were not made to tone down their hair and other signifiers. And Matt and Foggy talk. Since Danny isn't there to say it for himself, Matt tells Foggy that Danny's the immortal Iron Fist. He is the Iron Fist, and he will tell that to anyone who will listen. Colleen made the joke before I could. Ellie and Danny on the elevator. And Matt is asking a lot of people for a minute. I really love... Uh, I think it may be Foggy who refers to Jess as super-powered Joan Jet. And... Yeah, Foggy brought, uh, you know, Matt the, the Daredevil suit. I gotta say, the moment that Foggy said, I brought you a change of clothes, I knew that's what it was. I'm not sure why Matt was surprised or had to check to find out, but okay. Is that why you brought me down here? To be a translator? Okay, it says E-M-T-A-E. -E. Now reverse it. And the trio take a subway, and Jess steals beer from this, you know, like, vagrant or something. It's been a long week. <laughs> and, like, the, what the flick people, I quite like the line, what happened with the, wh where's the chick with the sword? There it is again. I'm so glad that Jess still hates Daredevil's suit. Like it would have been easy to have her be like, I don't know, it's growing on me. But just there it is again. <laughs> like the, it's, you know, it, it's it's the way that you refer to like, I don't know, like the the if if the yeah it's. If it's like Thanksgiving and your racist uncle says something really hateful, you might say, there it is again, you know. It's it's not a positive thing. And three fingers of hand, defenders, short Danny, and it cuts before the fight, and we see Danny versus Ellie, three fingers versus three defenders, and Daredevil taking on two at once. Awesome fight. And Danny attacks using the Iron Fist. She manages to redirect it to open the gate. Even though he had been told that the only way to open it was the fist. And it's just... I mean, I feel like people need to stop giving Danny one job to do. Because he he is so good at failing it. Like, I maybe, maybe like, reverse psychology or, or something. But don't tell him what he has to do, because he is going to fail. And Colleen wants to blow up Midland Circle, and they reluctantly agree. And Danny wakes up, we see the door having op opened, and what it opened up to. I really want Jessica Jones to reluctantly agree to be part of what's going on, but making snarky comments all along the way in every show. I don't just mean in the future. I mean edit her into shows from as far back as sh you know TV shows have been made. And with some exceptions, the fight in the show always involves people on both sides that the audience knows and understands. Sometimes we only realize at the end of the fight that we know the other person involved, like when Danny was fighting Cole. You know, Daredevil in both of his seasons fought a lot of Thugs and ninjas, Jessica didn't fight a huge amount of people, so it's difficult to compare. Danny also fought a lot of ninjas. Now, let's see. Yeah, you know, I, I really appreciate that we, we get to know the people 
fighting on both sides of the conflict much more compelling than just fights against faceless goons and I'm actually a bit of a apologist or defender if you will of the you know the the climax of Avengers films where you know a massive horde of faceless goons will you know attack so yeah and yeah so if I understand correctly Bakudo and Gao have the same status in the hand organization in Iron Fist season one Bakudo was taking advantage of Danny's hatred of Gao to try to get Danny on his side so that he would open the gate it's not that they were ever truly against each other uh, Bakudo and Gao I mean and that brings us to the final episode The Defenders So they discuss the bomb plan. For the record, everything that's been said in the last two minutes is 100% insane. But Claire has clearly missed her true calling. Politics. And they do end up agreeing to the bomb plan. And Ellie walks in the fossil. I really love Gao's description of the defenders. And Colleen wants to go with. Con Claire convinces her not to. I appreciate seeing the police reactions. Marvel, Netflix, are street level. You know, we don't see much of this in the movies. And Trish and Karen talk about the hand. Makes sense that they would try to get to the bottom of it. Both being somewhat journalists seeking truth. And Luke Cage bends steel like it's tinfoil. Which I will never be tired of seeing and they find the elevator I will find you wow that is weak sauce sod work on that Bakudo and Knight reaches Claire and loses an arm and Danny fights some of the hand people and go and I like, you know, Jessica alone on the, you know, that the thing of, I have a plan, but you're not going to like it, you know, and, and, you know, the elevator comes down and Jessica's the only one, you know, and they're, you know, what was it they said, 30 people with guns trained on, which I can't help but notice, but suddenly they don't, you know, they forget how to use guns once, you know, the, the defenders are all fight like, 30 guys. I feel like if they had just said there's 15 guys, but 30 guys with guns and four people are able to, like, if all of them hold off the same amount, that is, let's see, seven per person or something like that. I mean, I just, I feel like, that, you know, considering that Jessica doesn't fight much, she mostly just uses her super strength to quickly get out of situations and now she's fighting ninjas with guns that yeah anyway but it was you know yeah the the elevator comes down and Jessica who by herself doesn't you know everybody knows Jessica Jones doesn't really want to fight you know all the other ones they're just like no matter how much they you know the the lady Dolph protests too much they they deep down they really want to you know get involved and, and fight and such and she's like okay I don't give a shit what you're doing down here. I'm here to talk. I'm not here to fight you alone. And then, you know, all of them. So I guess they were on top of the... El no, because the top of the... El I, I guess they were hanging on to the, the wire or something. But, yeah, you know, that's cool. I Again, I know, I'm such a mark for that kind of thing. I've seen it dozens of times but I do just like you know because for, for for a second it's like oh no don't give up don't you know don't don't work with them or or refuse to fight them or something and then you know the one line and just yeah. and yeah we see the defenders fight 30 guys and two fingers and I like that, you know, Jessica says to Danny, come on, Ironclad, it's Iron Fist. I know.
It wasn't that she didn't remember and just made up. No, no, no. She was making fun of him. And she wants him to know that she was making fun of him. And Knight, Claire, and Colleen. And I, I gotta say, when, when she got her arm cut off, like, she kept firing the gun. I, I don't mind that she kept firing, you know, and I, I think she only hit with, like, three shots, you know. She had already spent some of the clip shooting the door to get in. But why does she just, like, slowly slide out the, the clip, and she's about to, like, put in another and, like, reload and keep shooting? Why does she just keep standing there? He's moving towards her. He's not being slowed down. He has a sword. That really didn't make a lot of sense to me. And if, I, I feel like it would have been more impactful. Like, let's say that she did, you know, try to run, and he manages to grab her, and then he cuts off the arms up, something like that. And I love the, the long take as the camera pans across the defenders, similar to the, the first two Avengers movies. That's, yeah. You disappoint me. And he continues to quote from the book of Evil Mentors of Good Guys. Mentors of good guys who, secret, who turn out to have been secretly evil. And, you know, after Knight loses her arm, Colleen cuts off Bakudo's head, and we see that the detonator was activated. Ten minutes. And Daredevil stays behind to reach Ellie. The others elevate up. Well, I think that should be a verb. And the hand climbed the fence next to it, which, uh, yeah, very cool. And... You know, Ellie stops the elevator and it's gonna fall, and Jess climbs and then holds the wire by herself. Stop staring, start climbing. I really love how each of the defenders get heroic moments here. And. Yeah, so we see the, the big explosion, and, you know, as others have pointed out, not every shot of the explosion looks completely convincing. You know, it is this. I get it, I get that not many people do models anymore, but I think I would have preferred, I, maybe some of it was models, but I'm almost certain some of it was CG, some of that CG was not completely convincing, and they think Daredevil is dead, like how Iron Man, you know, appeared to die at the end of Avengers 1, but in this they pretend for much longer than in Avengers 1. Like, in both cases, it's like, guys, we get it. You're not gonna kill the most popular one, you know, and Claire, you know, he he started the the whole, you know, the, the yeah, this universe, you know, he's why a lot of people are watching in the first place, you're not going to kill him off in the very first team up. Claire comforts Foggy, and Luke finds Jessica at a bar on her fourth, and they talk honestly. And I appreciate they actually do acknowledge, you know, both of them acknowledge that they did things wrong. And Jessica is going back in business. So, yeah, as, as far as I can tell, the, the fingers died in the explosion. And after the church scene, it goes to black. I actually thought they were seriously going to end the show pretending like Daredevil really was dead. No way they would do that like this. But we do see, you know, he's with nuns and... You know, someone says, he's awake, tell Maggie, and as far as I understand, that's from the comic, I guess I'm going to leave it at that. That's from the comic. And, let's see, so, so yeah, you know, personally, I thought it was really good. I, you know, I, I didn't think it was the very best one, but I'll get to my ranking very, very soon. 
I yeah, it the the show delivered for me what I had hoped to get out of it. You know, great character moments for everyone and just yeah. Um so the the review itself will be let's see. I don't think it's going to be tomorrow. I think it's going to be the day after tomorrow. Now, so some critics have said, you know, ultimately it doesn't really raise the stakes. A building blows up, sure, but so, you know, that also happened in Daredevil season 1, you know, all the way that far back. The problem is that you if you raise the stakes too much, then some someone's going to point out we need the Avengers for this, and they're not actually going to appear on the show. And someone countered, I agree that they didn't raise the stakes for, like, physical, but I thought the personal stakes were strong with Matt and Elektra. The main villains the heroes fought were ones they defeated on their solo series. And, let's see. Yeah, I gotta say, I like the idea that the, the dragon bone harvest was, you know, that's how they get the the immortality juice. That the, like, the, okay, so if I understand correctly, basically the idea would be that the dragon lives so long, survives so much, that within its bone, yeah, yeah, I guess, like, maybe it's bone marrow, if you if you stick that in a blender that can bring someone back from the dead you know and and one of the what the flick guys joked you know sure did whatever immortality is in those bones didn't keep the dragon alive i get the joke but just to, you know in case someone is is unclear basically you know the rejuvenation thing doesn't mean that you can't die it just means you can be brought back and you know, something happened to that dragon that killed it, like, in a, ah, what's the word, like a, like a permanent, well, yeah, like, you know, I don't know if it was the same for the dragon, but for people, evidently, if you cut off their head, you know, that's, that's how you prevent them from being rejuvenated. Or, brought back to life, anyway, um, let's see... I think that, yeah, I mean, I I personally felt like the idea that, you know, if you, if the fingers lose, as they did by the end here, that means that they're, you know, they can no longer bring back from, bring people back from the dead, you know, and... Yeah, I you know I, f I feel like that is because that's the big thing you know I mean yeah they're good at fighting so are other people they have numbers so do other groups you know but the thing that they can do that makes it so you know yeah they they can bring people back from the dead that's the the big thing that you know if you took that away that I I honestly. I don't know. I don't know if the hand appear in the Marvel Netflix shows after this one, but certainly I would be surprised if they were, you know, if they weren't somewhat weakened by this. But yeah, I felt like every major character, you know, there was something interesting with each of them. I think that is, yeah, I, I believe everything else I have left to say is so spoiler-free that it will go in the review itself. So, my ranking of everything Marvel Netflix that I have watched by this point. Worst to best, I love all except Iron Fist Season 1, Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, The Defenders, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, and Jessica Jones Season 1. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I guess I kind of see what people mean. 
you know, why why they didn't like this so much, but personally, I was quite satisfied. Um, yeah. So, hopefully, I will catch you in one of the other things I record this week. So, see you then.